In my Ryzen 5 5600X review, I ran into this pretty big problem with Call of Duty Warzone. So this Ryzen 5 would easily outperform the i5 in almost everything, but somehow in Warzone it had really terrible problems. So the frame rates were much lower than expected, there were constant freezes in the game, uh, there were constant stutters, and it was pretty much unplayable. Now, Considering the fact that this is one of the most popular games at the moment, I thought it was a pretty big problem because nobody really wants to go to a store and buy this brand new CPU that's supposed to be the best in its class and then realize that you're not able to play that one game that you really love to play. But you guys were pretty awesome and thanks to some really clever suggestions under my review, we actually tried a few things today and we managed to fix that problem and not only get Warzone to run better and smoother on this Ryzen 5, but we also improved frame rates on the Intel system as well. Let's begin. This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their Prime series power supplies. Even though we ran into some problems with this specific game, these power supplies were pretty much the only thing I knew I could absolutely count on. They are very reliable, they are whisper quiet, and they come with an awesome 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. Now in my review I compared AMD's Ryzen 5 5600X with Intel's i5 10600K, both on very similar test benches and using the exact same RTX 3080 GPU. Now you can check the exact details on both systems in the original video. On 1080p resolution, using a mix of settings that focuses on getting high frame rates without sacrificing visibility, the results were pretty disappointing for the AMD system and even more so when you compare it to how well it actually did in basically every other game. Even in esports titles like CSGO, Overwatch and even in Modern Warfare's regular multiplayer, this Ryzen 5 was beating Intel comfortably. But the issues in Warzone were actually very significant. Since I was getting over 200 FPS using the exact same RTX 3080 with an i9, as well as with the new Ryzen 9 5900X, and then barely over 100 FPS with this CPU, the problem was either in Warzone itself or with the hardware. Now, I asked AMD if they were familiar with the problem or heard anyone else having it, but they actually had no idea, so I started the usual. Uh, changed some graphic settings in Warzone to see if any specific one was causing the problem. Uh, we tried different GPU drivers, we did a clean install of Warzone, we did a clean install of Windows, uh, tried changing the, the memory settings, the timings, uh, even changed the entire memory kit, and at the end even changed the entire motherboard. No change, same stutters. Uh, then we tried the RTX 3070 instead, thinking it was just a specific CPU and GPU combination. Again, no changes, same issues. Now, unfortunately, uh, when you're looking at a new CPU launch, you only have you know, a couple of days to get all your testing done and at some point you kind of have to draw a line and carry on with other things that you need to do. But I really thought it was very important to bring this issue up as you know, other people might encounter the same thing. And I'm actually really happy I did because after I posted this video, uh, I got a lot of comments from other people that had actually very similar problems with their Ryzen CPUs but also some people with their Intel systems as well. So the same frequent hangs, the same low FPS, the same stutters and so on. And with that, many of you actually came with some really good suggestions about what could be causing it and how to fix it. So thank you so much for that. It helped a lot. Actually much more than other people saying that because you know other channels didn't have the same problem, it doesn't exist. That's not how things work. So, we tried a few good ones related to specific game settings to various drivers and where we ultimately found a fix was a simple Warzone file in your documents folder that had to be changed. Now, if you go to My Documents, uh, Modern Warfare, Players and then open the Advanced Options file, there are two things that might cause issues the video memory scale and the render worker count and the last one was actually causing the problem in my system. After a clean install, this number was set by default to 12, which I assume is because it's a six core CPU with multi-threading. So it has 12 logical processors, but you know, I have absolutely no idea if this is the real reason. I couldn't really find a clear explanation, but I've heard that changing this number to the amount of physical cores a CPU has, which is six in this case, might fix the issue. So I changed the number to six, I saved the file and I started Warzone again and miraculously all the problems were gone. 
Average FPS, 10% lows, 1% lows, everything went up, the crashes and freezes went away, and AMD was suddenly well ahead of Intel where we expected it to be, and the balance in the universe was restored. But that also got me thinking, what was the work account for the i5 system? Now Warzone was pretty smooth on the i5, it didn't have any stutters and it was ahead of AMD, so I didn't really consider it might have a problem as well. Now for the i5, the game just decided to put the number 9 because, you know, why not? I mean, I have no idea. But I changed this value to 6 as well and it actually boosted Intel's performance and not by a little here. AMD did end up ahead, but actually it was really close. So overall, I would say AMD is the objective winner, but not by a lot. Now, obviously this really won't solve all the possible issues you might have with Warzone, but for me, this actually changed the game from being completely unplayable to a super smooth experience on this Ryzen 5. And it actually really improved performance on a completely different Intel system as well. So I think it's definitely something that you should try out for yourself uh, and see if changing the setting will improve your game or not. And this is definitely something that we will be keeping an eye on in the upcoming CPU tests and all our reviews. Now, I also wanted to talk to you about my CSGO results as well, because some of you were wondering why I showed results in the 300 to 400 FPS range, while other channels would get more than 600 FPS. Well, it completely kind of depends on how you test. So if I start a simple game with bots and just run under the bridge in the dust map, you can easily see some extreme FPS values. But if you look at the moments in each game that matter most, uh, with multiple players just running around shooting and throwing grenades around you, you will see much lower frame rates. Now, um, there are arguments for both ways. Uh, you can see uh, that higher FPS scenes better show raw CPU difference, or that lower FPS scenes are actually a more realistic benchmark of your actual experience in a game. And I don't personally think either way is right or wrong, but I hope that does explain why results can sometimes really vary by such a big amount, even when using the same graphic settings in the same game. And, you know, keep in mind, most channels out there test in their own way with, you know, different games and different settings. Uh, some might by default test a couple of games that just happen to favor AMD, while others might run a different set of games that still give Intel a fighting chance. And, you know, just because they're different doesn't mean they're wrong. Uh, I would say reviews are not a competition, they're just meant to, you know, collectively help you make a better decision at the end of the day, nothing else. Anyway, I hope uh, this helped, uh, I especially hope this helped to people that were really excited about Ryzen 5 but worried about Warzone, or maybe to someone that is encountering similar issues but, you know, didn't find a fix yet. That's it for me for today, bye guys!